So y'all ready to party or what? Woo! Woo! Let's go ahead and get this boat call going, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, Vincent Rodriguez III plays Josh Shad in the critically acclaimed Emmy and Golden Globe He has guest starred on Positives, Donnie, Another Period, Adam Ruins Everything, and Designated Survivor. Give it up for Mr. Vincent Rodriguez. Here we go. Miss Angela Relucio plays Nurse Risa Park in the Adrenaline Rush Hit CBS medical drama, Code Black. Hey. Everywhere I go from now on. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Aina Dum Lao, ladies and gentlemen, plays Andy Lee in the CBS hit adventure MacGyver. She appeared on IFC. Uh -huh. yes, yes. She appeared on IFC's Brockmire and ABC's Last Man Standing, and she will soon appear in the new season of Freeform's The Fosters and three episodes in the new season of HBO's Follow. Help me welcome. Yeah. All right, all right, and we do have one more person that's ready to be here on our panel. They're just running a little late. We have to see some element of Filipino science. Don't say that again. He's oh. here. <laughs> I'm the one that's messed up. Okay, so here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Manny Jacinto plays Jason Mendoza in the hit NBC comedy, The Good Place. Come on. Fox's Wayward Pines and CBC's The Romeo Section, where he was nominated for a Leo Award for Best Supporting Performance by a Male in a Dramatic Series. Show some love for Manny <laughs> So, how are you all feeling this morning? Good. Happy to be here. Warmer yeah. now. <laughs> Warmer. Okay, yeah, we had a killer AC up here, but now yeah. it's not. It's, it's not chill, on. it's so chill, it's chill. For you all. So I just want to have this as a friendly reminder, the mics that you see in front of you um, are not actually linked to the system. They're more for audio and recording purposes. So you can just have a, a normal sort of volume as it's, it's an intimate space. So right. don't do this. Don't do <laughs> <laughs> or you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So Mr. Rodriguez III, right? All right, so <laughs> let's party. Noted. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, my first question for you all this morning is to take us to your beginning. More specifically about the aha moment that made you realize that this is actually what you wanted to do. Uh, take us back to that and sort of how you got your start. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. And then we like all, no, no. Oh gosh, do I have, do I have to go first? And, and it's an open forum. Who, who has the fresh memory of what that was? It all started in the womb. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> I guess it's I'll start. Um, my husband and I, we have a production company, so I, I, I started on the other side at the camera first. We started producing commercials, short films, and just one day we were looking for a Filipino actor for a Western Union spot. And I'm like, oh, um, I'm Filipino, but I'm not an actor. <laughs> so I was kind of just thrust into it. So I, I wouldn't say that was my aha moment, but that was the first moment where I had a taste of it, really. And after that, you know, it's just, oh, I'm slipping into all these roles, all these different characters, and it just was addicting. It was an addicting journey after that, so. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I was a bit different. I never really grew up performing. I grew I grew up playing a lot of sports and being into school, like your typical Asian childhood, um, <laughs> studying, working hard that way. But um, I actually got into dance really late. I was about like 20 years old. And uh, I think this was about the time when America's Best Dance Crew came out and I was seeing all these like Aww. Filipinos and like all these Asian people. And I was like, hey, that seems cool. And 
<laughs> and like they say, Filipinos can all like dance and, and sing. like sing and whatnot. <laughs> so then I try to class out and that performance aspect um, in dance is what introduced me to this whole new world. Because before that it was all just, yeah, school, uh, university, studying. Um, and then I think I got even more curious and then started going into acting a little bit just to dabble in it and try to improve my performance on stage as a dancer. And then once I started exploring that venue or avenue, um, I got hooked. And that's when I started focusing more on acting and it just kept <laughs> going from there and hopefully it'll keep going. Yeah. <laughs> You know how, um, like, your mom or dad will tell you, "Oh my gosh, you're you're like, tell you how special you are," and in, or, or like, or like your aunt or everybody's just like, "You're so cool. You should, you should be an artista." Like, you know, like all this, you should move to Philippines, all these things, and then, and and then to find out like everyone's mom says that to them, and <laughs> so you're not actually that special. Well, so then that's that's how it all kind of started, right? But then, um, but then I became obsessed with Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV show. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, no, I need to be a vampire slayer in Hollywood right now. <laughs> and yeah. so that's really like, I was just like, no, I should do this this acting thing. And then in high school, you know, you're always in, in the drama club and in musicals. And I said, no, I feel like, I feel like I could do this. I feel like I want to do this. And I wish I'd, I had started doing it earlier, but I waited and, you know, um, went to school and finished school and got a, a career job and all that stuff. So I feel like I really should have started it when I felt the impulse to, to go out and just do it. Um, but I'm glad I, I did it anyway. And so um, onward, <laughs> onward and upward, guys, right? Yeah, so. uh, yeah. yeah I, felt, I felt the same way. I, I, I wish I did it. I was younger mm -hmm. um, because uh, let's see here um, someone just asked me this question so I'm gonna feel like I'm repeating myself but I'm, I'm not because you didn't hear that question earlier uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, they weren't there Vinny it's fine um, I I don't know I was a kid my I found out from from my sister that I would sing myself to sleep I'd rock myself and sing myself to sleep so I thought that's not normal uh, <laughs> and then and then of course like when Thriller came out, like who wasn't like trying to wear all red and sequins, wear one glove, <laughs> not two, one. Okay, mom, can you bedazzle my glove for me? Like, uh, no, I didn't ask my mom to do that. But uh, but I, I was obsessed with Michael Jackson's. So I would do his dances, and my mom would buy me like little Michael Jackson outfits, and my relatives would come over, and I would like dance. But I didn't like feel so comfortable with it because I was like, it wasn't the original choreography. <laughs> I didn't like I didn't I didn't like choreographing my own things. It's like no no no, that's not how Michael does it in the video. Um, so, so, but it was really through like dancing and like singing and my sister was in choir um, and you know, Disney at the time, like Little Mermaid was coming out. So I was, and I wasn't singing the Sebastian part, I was singing Ariel's part because I was a soprano <laughs> nice. when I was a kid. Um, and also my, because my sister was kind of teaching me how to sing, so I would mimic her and she's a girl. so sing like her. Uh, and then my, my eldest sister, she played piano, so um, when she wasn't playing it, I'd be playing it, so teaching myself piano. And, and somewhere in there, like I wanted to be a performer, and I think the first thing was, I guess it was Michael Jackson dances, and then it led to like action movies and wanting to be like a Ninja Turtle so bad. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's what I want to do. And since I didn't get into like classes, like tr formal training, um, I just took martial arts. So to me, that was the performance aspect. Like you're talking about like, dance was your gateway. Mm -hmm. um, so martial arts was, and then that just kind of took over my life, gave me discipline, gave me strength, gave me confidence. I was, a ch I was a chubby kid. And by the time I was a senior, I was like eating rice every day and looked like this. Um, but by the time I was a senior, I, was do I did every single musical in high school because that's where I got introduced to theater was my freshman year of high school. So, um, but, but had I been able to, if I was able to go back, I would have taken dance class, acting class, singing class mm -hmm. at the young age that I wanted to, um, which is now why I actually go back to my hometown and I teach those things. Wow. So, nice. yeah. <laughs> Awesome, thank you so much. So um, I'm curious to know, I mean, Angela was touching on it just a few minutes ago. Um, how much of your Filipino culture and identity was an essential part of your upbringing as an artist? 
Do you have your Tita Boys and Tita Barbies telling you to get on that mic? You know, do you have parents who are performers? Any kind of influence in any way, shape, or form in terms of, in terms of your artistic journey? Um, I mean, my childhood is pretty similar, I guess, to everybody here up on the stage and everybody. At three years old, I would get thrown candy and like five peso coins and like just sing and I'm like crying because I don't really want to sing. I don't really want to dance, but that's like my foray into it. But I also grew up, my, I had one piece, my, my, my favorite song was Part of Your World also. There you go. So that it's was one, my hurrah moment as a child. But yeah, you know, I, I, I was forced into it. So I guess I, I was a little bit traumatized growing <laughs> up that I didn't want to be an actor. I didn't want to be a singer just because my family was like... Just throwing candy at you. Throwing I, candy at me. That's traumatizing. <laughs> so it had the reverse effect it's... of it, I guess, you know. But later on, I realized that my heart was into it. So it just took me a while just because of the childhood trauma. <laughs> the chocolate trauma? Oh, it's chocolate specifically. <laughs> It melted. It was a mess. Um, for me, I mean, I did definitely have like some aunts that were singers or performers. Um, but um, what was it? Um, for my family, it was always like it was never. It was always going to be be a doctor, or be a oh, lawyer, yes. be the nurse, or or whatever. So I never really had that. Um, opportunity and like I said the only time that it kind of my eyes kind of opened was when I saw the people on TV um, of my skin color of my heritage do what I wanted to do and that was actually pretty late um, I think if anything though the one thing that being Filipino um, helped me with was my work ethic because trying not to go into a big story but I just remember in university just studying late at night and then and then staying in these classrooms by myself and then there would be and it's unfortunate it'd be like the the janitor or um, somebody cleaning up late at night and they were like you know in happy spirits and they're like they say how are you and everything I'm just like man this guy is like working late at night and um, has no complaints. Working three jobs. Probably working three too. jobs, yeah. probably. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I have nothing to complain about. Let's just power through this. And I think that kind of mindset helped me get through dance, get, helped me, continues to help me get through acting. Um, so I think that's, if anything, the biggest thing. Um, I, my, I was always enrolled in dance classes. Um, but I don't think it was ever a question of whether or not I should should be in the performing arts. I think it was for my parents or for family and relatives, certainly. They, they, you, they just assume it's a hobby, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something you do and maybe to one-up your cousin or to like, oh, <laughs> I don't know, or something gosh. like, you know, your cousins, they're great dancers. And then you, you go to another family reunion and someone's like, playing the banjo while playing classical guitar and singing at the same time, and you're like, wow, I'm really slacking. Um, <laughs> or something, I'm like, how many hands do you have? Um, so so I think it's it, for, I don't know, I don't know if you guys know that, but I just feel like with, with Filipinos and relatives, it's like they all want you to do well, but I don't know, but at the same time, it's a little bit of a one-upmanship to just try to, to maybe like represent your family better than your, you know, your uncles and your cousins. Mm. So, so, but it was never like necessarily encouraged to, to be, acting was never encouraged to be basically pursued as a career. I think it was just like a hobby or something you do. But so then there's that moment, the, the oh crap moment when you say, no, I want to do it for real and, and make money doing it. Or like, like, you know, and then there, people question um, why, why you want to do that and not um, work for a pharmaceutical company or something like that, which is fine and dandy, but it wasn't for me. So I think, yeah, I think I think I think growing up it was just a mixed bag of um, I'm encouraged to do it, but then when you say you want to do it for real, it's not then it's no longer encouraged. So yeah, it's almost like they, they give you that taste, and it, it's, it's it sounds like um, based on what I'm hearing, it sounds like a mixed message. It's kind of in, in a way. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. you want to throw candy at me, so I'll <laughs> sing. Well, now I want to sing professionally. Wait, what? No, you can't do that. Yeah. You have to go here. Take a scalper, go dissect this frog, and go and go get into medical school. You know, um, which I grew up with as well. Absolutely. Um, 
And so if, if any, yeah, I think I grew up with the same. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I, I would add was uh, the resistance I got from my family and the, they, because they did give me some support, of course. There was there was support, but not like we love the fact that you're an yeah. actor and go do it. And what can we? Yeah, it wasn't really like I didn't feel like I was being cheerleaded into doing this. Um, so what it did teach me though uh, is if you really want something, you have to not let anything get in your way if you really want to pursue something. And then that, as I got older, I realized like, oh, that's the gift I got. So my, mm -hmm. like my dad wasn't very, he was the most unsupportive because he wanted me to take over the family business. He wanted me to be a nurse. He was just concerned. My mm -hmm. dad was like any other dad, it doesn't matter what ethnicity, just wanted me to be able to provide for myself and was just worried that mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to do that. And so he was like, be a nurse because he knows that's Medic, like everyone knows pharmaceutical is a really good job and you don't have to worry about anything. Everything's gonna be great. Be a nurse and your life is set. Um, it's like, mm. so I feel like there's a little bit of like ignorance there where you know you don't know about a certain career so we're not gonna, we're not going to advocate for you to do that career. But we're also not going to research how beneficial that career is. We're just gonna look at the media, we're gonna look at what people are saying about it and we're gonna take that for, for value as opposed to like um, at one point I got a gift in high school from my eldest sister and it was this thick encyclopedia of every single performing arts occupation <laughs> and how much they make, what their degrees are and where they would work and it was eye-opening to me and it's such a gift and it made me realize this is a book that neither of my parents think no, no exist or are probably pursuing to to read and that's a problem like not wanting to look into what you're doing like it's the same thing like when people say I want to be an actor it's like okay do you know what that means mm -hmm. it's like can you speak in front of people can you talk about yourself can you play pretend for two hours in front of people you don't know in a dark room like <laughs> you know what I mean like the, there's a lot of things that come with these occupations and you know if you're afraid of blood don't be a nurse uh, but it's, it's that kind of a thing and so I I, th I think with, with all that, I, I, I really learned like, wow, when, when, when you don't get the support you need or you're hearing naysayers around you, that's the test mm -hmm. is like, what, you, what should you truly be doing? And so not, not to say the Filipino culture is full of naysayers, that's not, that's mm -hmm. not the equation, I, I, but, it's, but it's that context of like, my parents just didn't know what acting was and that was very scary for them. So when I didn't have their support, it kind of forced me to like do the research, find the books, uh, like in a way be a better student. So mm -hmm. it's so ironic because my dad is such, was such a businessman. He wanted me to be a businessman and I didn't want to be a businessman. Now I'm totally a businessman. A business <laughs> wow. Totally a businessman. I teach, I, mot I motivate, I talk to students, I, I'm, I'm in training all the time, and whether it's in martial arts or in acting or in singing or in dancing um, or for learning how to teach acting. Like I'm constantly fueling my brain and being a student of life and of things that interest me. And I kind of got that from that sense of like, you have to work hard for something you want. And you gotta know it very, very well. Cause, cause you don't wanna do something and not be good at it. You wanna like really excel at it. So I think that's actually what I learned was like, you really have to go for it in a way. And I guess I learned that in, in different ways, whether it was lack of supporting me or like a sense of, well, if you're gonna do this, you better be really good at it. I'm like, okay, run faster, harder, stronger, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, Let's just keep it real. How many of their stories resonate with you all in your experience, right? So we share sort of that, that same narrative. Um, so thank you for being open about that. Um, you make reference to the work ethic. You make reference to the business, mm -hmm. right? Um, given that this is a business industry, as much it is our, as it is entertainment and artistic, what is the most valuable lesson you all have learned on the business side of your journey? Be nice to everybody, you know, like my husband who's sitting there, the one of two white guys sitting there <laughs> on the side. Call it out, call it out, call it out. Everyone's nodding their head, they're like, yeah, we know. 
Not odd at all. <laughs> at all. My, my first ever audition, when I first started out like three and a half years ago, I went to this casting office at CAST. I'm sure you guys know about CAST. Um, I was just in my head. I was nervous. I felt like puking, you know? So I, I just wasn't paying attention to my surroundings. I'm like, okay, what are my lines? What am I going to do? What am I saying? So in turn, I, the casting director walked out. I didn't know what casting directors were supposed to look like at that time. So I just kind of just brushed her aside without being mean. I wasn't intending to be mean. And my husband set me aside and he said, hey, just smile, just be nice, just acknowledge whoever it is around you and just, you know, just be a personable, friendly person. And after that point, I was just, being nice is so much easier anyway, but in this business, you don't know who it is that you're encountering on a day-to-day -day basis. You could encounter the next Manny Jacinto, the next Angela Relucia, then like Patty Jenkins, you know? It's like, just be nice to everybody, it goes a long way. And it's fun. <laughs> yeah, being nice is, it, it's huge in the long run. And um, I haven't worked with like a lot of professional actors and stuff, but from the people that I've worked with, um, one common trait is their genuine um, personality and their um, welcomingness. Um, and I think it just goes to say that uh, people who are nice um, work longer careers because they want to work with these people. Um, and I always say that you can tell so much about a person by how they treat mm -hmm. The, the I guess, yeah, the lower, George lower Clo people. George Clooney knows the name of every person on set. He makes it a point to spend yeah. a couple of seconds of his day and just say, hi, my name is George, obviously. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Does he say obviously? Yeah, I know. <laughs> hi, I'm George. <laughs> Obvi. <laughs> Obvi. <laughs> you can hashtag Obvi, I'm George Clooney. <laughs> So, and obviously you'd run into the people that will kind of like bring you down a little bit, but mm -hmm. no, just stay kind and, and humble and you'll go a long way for sure. Um, but also in terms of, yeah, my professional career, um, I mean, it's kind of simple to say this, but it's really, and I guess uh, Vinny also touched on this, it's, it's all really on you. Um, you can ask for people's advice and ask if you're good or not, or am I gonna make it, but, I mean, if you don't believe in yourself, then you're not really going to get too far. you got to believe in it regardless of what everybody else says, thinks, um, or perceives. you got to just go for it yourself. I'm just curious, how many of you are uh, pursuing acting right now, or are actor or performers and stuff? Okay, great. I just wanted to like, thank you, very cool. Well, that helps with this <laughs> discussion. <laughs> so, no, because we can skew yeah, it to... <laughs> Because um, Gift. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great question that Maroos asked because uh, exactly, you have to be um, up to par with your craft. It's, it, it's acting, you have to be a good actor, but at the end of the day, you're playing pretend, right? So, so then as a, as a business person who you're marketing, your body is your tool and your skill and your craft. So as actors, this is, and it drives me bonkers because I have friends that I dearly love, but then when they have when they complain that nothing is happening for them, or it's because they're playing a waiting game, and it's not a waiting game. You can't let your agent or your manager do the work for you, and you sit home and you wait for a phone call. It's like, what, the fact that you guys are here on a Saturday morning means you're already, I don't want to say better than your friends, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah kind yes, of, you're because, right. because you're, you're, you're already doing something, which is better than nothing, and this is, a, this is exactly where you need to be at panels, um, casting director workshops, are a huge thing. I know there's all this discrepancy with it, but you know what? When when you do that, um, you, I have friends who you, you know I like a good cocktail just as much as the next person. But when you're you know if it's if it's a choice of a, I'm very happy when you say cocktail. Yeah, cocktail. Yeah. If it's if a choice of you know you only have 25 bucks to spend on three drinks, or you go out and meet an industry professional and learn about their day to day workings of their office. And you get to perform a scene because that, that's you practicing um, how to be in front of people and also uh, show, show off your craft, then that, that does trump you going out on a, on a Thursday night. And you got to be doing that. And you got to be, so it's not just going to acting class. There's all these other things. Or if you feel like you don't have enough like special skills, go and take a martial arts class, go and take a tap dance class, uh, see where it el what else you excel in. But any, anything you can add to the dimension of who you are and to make yourself 
be able to work more and put yourself out there. I think it's so important. And that I think that's what will stand out between you and your friend who isn't making any headways, just you doing, doing, doing. I have a friend who is one of the most dedicated people I know, and she gets up at 6.30 in the morning so that she can look um, – through roles on Actors Access, wow. you know, and and submit to those. And if she knows the ca the casting director or the director involved with that, she'll copy and paste that submission, write it to her manager, shoot it out. Then she'll go to a one-hour class at the gym. Then she'll come back and take an online acting class uh, w with her coach from you know nine to ten twenty-five or something like that. And then she'll go and do a couple of drop-offs because she'd heard about roles and breakdowns. And then she'll come home and and then and then I'll wake up. You know. <laughs> 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 you know that was you once. All no, of you were no, like, no. that was me. No, and, and, um, and no, but I admire her and I use her as an example because I, I always say she's as hardworking as I am and I admire that of the, the friends and that's why she is doing much more and making much more, covering more ground than a few of our other mutual friends. So it's, it's really important, guys, that you can't just sit around, like do so something, anything and it'll be better. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna, I, I mean, I 100% I agree with everything that has been already been said. Um, what c came to mind when you were speaking, Angela, was uh, the word development. Uh, there are departments specifically called development at movie studios, TV studios. You, each of you, have are in charge of your own development, your personal development, your career development, your your personal development, your health development, your mental development, mm -hmm. your skill development. So what are you doing to feed that? And is it imbalanced? Some of us like, oh, my love, my love life is in a mess or like my career is in a mess. Well, what are you putting all your, what are you focusing on? What are you actually developing? What plants are you watering? Mm -hmm. And so you can't get mad something's not growing because you're not feeding it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard, and I say, and I then the next thing, so development, but I also say balance. Like, uh, the spokes on a wheel are all the same length, because, and then that's how things roll, right? How they spin. But if spokes on a wheel are, if one or three are shorter than the other, that doesn't roll, does it? It's not a circle anymore. So it doesn't flow, it doesn't roll, it kind of jumbles itself forward mm -hmm. if if or it doesn't move at all so the only time things th that wheel rolls is if all the spokes are are on the same length so the balance is, is a huge challenge people used to ask me what's the hardest thing with your transition from stage to film and I said and even before that it was balanced <laughs> it's like just trying to because I chased the classes and and you know the survival jobs and sometimes you need like a voice of reason to be like um you're not balanced right now. <laughs> you're doing too much of this and not enough of this. Okay, now you're doing too much of this and not enough of that. And then I was like trying to find that happy medium. Um, but another thing to say, because we were talking about like I think business and like advice uh, is, um, I was gonna say, uh, you know, you are your business. So you have to, just similar to developing yourself, you have to invest in yourself. And that's not just, Money, that's time. So if you have to learn a dialect, you gotta work on your speech, you gotta work on your voice, you gotta work on um, your memorization or your absorption, I should say. Uh, your ability to drop into a moment at a moment's notice or believe a circumstance that is nowhere near to be true. Like if you, that's what you need to work on, then, then you, need that, you need to invest the time and energy into that. And energy is sometimes your time uh, uh, but it's sometimes your money. So if you don't have the money, people complain, I don't have enough money. It's like, but you know what you do have? You do have time mm -hmm. and you do have energy. So there really isn't an excuse. Um, well, so I, so I guess that's my, my point. It's like you have to like be willing to invest in yourself and that's not always financial. Sometimes it's just putting yourself out there. Um, but yeah, it does take money to make money. So when you do take that if you take a bunch of classes, because this has happened to me, we're all take five classes at once, and I realized, oh, so I went gung-ho gung for it, and I went, ooh, actually, I did myself a disservice because I wasn't 100% in those five classes, but the time where I was so poor I could only afford one class, and it was a four-hour class, and I had it twice a week, 
I would run from work to there. I'd go from there to go back to work, work a crappy job just so I could take this class. It mattered more to me. I learned more. I took so many notes. You have no idea. I still have all them. I haven't read them, but I took all the notes. Um, and, uh, and, then I, and, then, and sometimes you get to that four-hour class, and you're up on stage for like 60 to 90 seconds, and then you're never up there again. And you're like, son of a... And you get mad, but it's like, wait a minute. This is what I love. This is what I do. My job is to observe life and be able to play pretend so i'm going to do that i'm going to invest in my in my in myself and know i'm in this class and i'm going to milk milk it for what it's worth so um so that's that's what i would say awesome okay i'm just going to quickly follow up on a few points that you all just made because there are actors and experts who will argue that hard work is just not enough right mm -hmm. that at some point luck has to also be on your side Right, and so I'm curious to know where you sit with that in terms of your experience. How much of it has been good old hard work, and how much of it has been good luck, being at the right place at the right time, you know, meeting someone who connected you to somebody else, etc. I feel like opportunity has to always meet with preparedness. Mm -hmm. Luck will knock at your door, but if you hadn't worked on your craft for two or three years, you haven't been working on being a better actor, then it doesn't matter. The opportunity will go away. So I think what happened with me with Andy Lee with MacGyver, it's like, okay, you have to lay yourself down on tape. But I was ready. I had all my headshots lined up. I had my IMDB up to date. I had my reels, which I spent a lot. We edit, but then you know we shot a lot of things just to beef up my reels. So that was also ready. So when the opportunity came and I laid myself down on tape, I saw that on my website because I look at my website a lot, it's like, oh, somebody looked at my reel, and there's like 10 views. So, you know, the average, I would say, is like two a day. Then all of a sudden, there were a lot of views. So I knew that not only did they see my tape, they looked at my reels, they looked at my website, they looked at IMDB, and then they made their decision. And I was Andy Lee, I'm MacGyver. So I feel like in this case, and in most cases, just 50-50, opportunity has to meet with preparedness. You just always have to work on your craft. And adding to what Vince was saying, it's like, you don't need to have money to work on your craft. Sometimes I just pull sides on Actors Access on show facts. Yeah. I put myself down on tape or I just sit down and spend 10 minutes and read the sides like, oh, Criminal Minds, okay, I'm just gonna work on this today because I can't afford a class, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So just always, always, always work on your craft. Yeah, yeah uh, just touching on that. Yeah, there's so many things that you can do um, without having to pay for it. Like, <coughs> You can look at a, you can study scripts um, online. You can get them for free, and then you can watch um, the movie and just study how they how each actor works and how they do it and like their actions and motivations. And there's just so much you can do without having to pay for anything. Um, but yeah, you basically said what I wanted to say. Like, just be prepared for that opportunity because um, I am of the mindset of hard work. Um, will get you as uh, farther than, than luck and talent. Um, so as long as you work on your craft and you're treating it as a nine to five or more so like a nine to nine or even like a 24 seven, you, you'll be ready for that opportunity. And once it comes like, um, yeah, you'll be a lot more thankful that you were doing your work rather than drinking a cocktail at 3 p.m. or 5 p.m. or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, just be ready for that opportunity, if anything. And also, sorry, just, just to add again, like there were times that I don't get auditions, especially when I was still starting out. So I, there was an audition that my friend went into for a different role. It was called Claws, I think that's out right now. Claws, um, creator of Andy Tribeca, right? So there was a particular role for an Asian there that was out, but obviously I wasn't gonna get call, get called in for that, but my friend had access to the sites. I laid myself down, we worked our ass off, my husband and I, who's been an actor for 20 years, and he's my coach, <laughs> he is my coach. But um, we worked on it a lot, put myself down on tape, I sent a tasteful message to the casting director, I said, hey, feel free to ignore my email, but if there's any chance that you haven't found the person that you're looking for, here's my tape. Take it or leave it, but I just look at it if it interests you. And I got called in. So you can make opportunities for yourself too, but just make sure that your work is something that you're proud of mm -hmm. so that when you do poke through, mm -hmm. you're not shutting the doors on yourself just because it's not good enough. So just a tip. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Preach. I mean, this was well said by Anna and, <laughs> and, yeah, and Annie. And um, it, it drives me bonkers when if, if someone finds out, you know, I'm recurring on a show and then they go, oh, you're, oh wow, you really lucked out. <laughs> Did I really? Luck. Because because the thing is, it's like they don't realize how much blood, sweat, and tears you put into it, mm -hmm. and how I've been acting professionally since 2010. But then by you know the, you know five, and then it would be 2015 when I started on Code Black. But it's it's not just yeah okay. So luck might maybe you know the right person saw me on a good day when I you know happened to look the part and sound it and all this a little bit right. But just remember that it's like. When people say that, it's just you have to remind them that it's not just luck. You were you were prepared, and you opened yourself up to the opportunity, and you went out and 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 worked. And so, if this is the goal, I always tell people like attack it from every angle. And I don't know why I always think of an embryo and sperm, but <laughs> <laughs> it says a lot about thing, you. Because I was I'm with you. I'm with you. Keep going. Because okay. I was thinking like, here's the goal, and you just have to like. Swim at it and try to, and only one needs to break through, and then you've got. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you get it. So that's then, so. So please then, think about that then, every day. Okay. You just attack it from all angles, yeah. all the different methods you can do. So it's <laughs> classes, it's workshops, it's the the Saturday panels, industry panels. Um, when when you go out and you're hanging out at a party and your friends introduce you to people, it's being kind, it's being gracious, and then it's um, preparing. It's waking up a little bit earlier. If if if, if you're if you don't like the way you look on film at you yourself, then you know go and you know work out extra or you know um, go to the makeup counter for an hour and, and talk to the lady and figure out what ma what makes your coloring look good on screen. Um, anything, all these things help, but you got to keep keep at it and then. <laughs> one of those is going to break through. Like a sperm. <laughs> one of those sperms is yeah. going to get in that embryo. Oh, God. This is, okay. So this is what I, this is, but it's exactly with, with yeah. luck and opportunity. It's yeah. it's not just that. It's you got to yeah. go at it from all directions and then see what, you know, what's going to, what's going to work for you. Um, and it is tough because everyone says, oh, you, as long as you work hard, you're going to achieve your dreams. Oh, I hate to say it, but like, oh my God, it's it's so not even true in this industry. What will happen when you work hard is you increase your chances, uh, your opportunity, and your, your chances of making it increase. You become luckier. Yeah, by <laughs> working hard. But but that's what working hard does. Working does working hard increases your opportunity because you're you're going at it full force. Does it is it equal to? It, does it guarantee success? Unfortunately, in this industry, it doesn't, but it means that you can never say, I didn't work hard enough. Because you, you just worked your ass off and you did everything you want to and that you could. And for whatever reason, if you're over it and you leave the industry or the industry left you or whatever it is, you can't, it can't be because, oh, this, this person didn't work hard enough. It's like enough. an amicable breakup. Yeah, you, you, worked, yeah. you worked hard and that's, what, that's the best you can do. So. Yeah, you don't get to know which sperm is going to You don't. You don't. <laughs> Always the sneaky one. You just don't. Sometimes you never know which... I'm going to keep pulling, going back to that. As we're along this panel, I'm going to yes. find a way to get that sperm and embryo metaphor back in there. No, but you really don't know. And that's why it is important to, um, to train and work hard. And But you don't really know what element of your development or your journey is going to click with you or click with the industry, maybe it's a headshot. Maybe it's um, a newfound confidence. Maybe it's a color you're wearing. I, 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 I had the luxury of having a, a very good friend of mine who's an executive at, at one of these TV studios watch an audition that I was going to submit for a movie. And I told him, I was like, Okay, I realize who you are, and I'm gonna try not to think about that, but I'm gonna have you watch this, and, we'll, and I'm gonna try not to look at your face while you watch this, but I'm gonna look at your face while you watch this. <laughs> or I'll watch them, and I saw him make, like, fake, like cringe, and like go, okay, pretty good, and go like, towel, why are you wearing a towel? That's too much, Ugh. I mean, I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> but, it, but at the end, I, I thought, you know, it was really cool to hear like someone else's point of view, and realize that, our job as actors or as artists is to create our work and to do our best. That's it. What other people think about it is none of our business. It, it affects us, mm -hmm. obviously. Oh, did you get the audition? Did you not get the audition? Did you get the callback? Did you not get the callback? Did you book the job? Did you not book the job? But really, that's the part we can't control. But what we can control yep. is the hard work we put in, 
the balance we have in our life with everything else going on, the amount of development we're we're pursuing with our personal life and our and our career and our skill set, and you have to remember that you don't get to know when it's going to hit or when it's going to click, and um, if you're lucky, you will be ready at the time you get your shot, at the time you get your opportunity. So. Um, whenever I'm training for something or I'm working with a student, one of the things that's, that's playing in my head is you don't get to know when that perfect role gets emailed to you or you're gonna go in for this role and it's your role. You don't get to know. But what you do get to know is that every time you work is your best work. Every time you have an opportunity to read that side over coffee and you've memorized it in 10 minutes, you have that ability. There's times in our life where things feel like they don't matter, right? Because no one's watching us. But when writers write, when they take that blank page and there's nothing there and they have all these ideas and they start to write and then 65 pages later they wrote a whole script. They just created a world. How many people are in that script? How many characters? 20. 20 jobs, 20 actors. How many locations? 15. Who's going to design those sets? Who's going to Who's going to put move those sets? How many props? Like, you don't you don't realize how powerful you are, and how p a part of something so big you are. You you you're 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 a very important cog. We all are. Artists are really important because when we work together, we can create worlds. You can take a blank page and make it into anything you want, and that's really what our job is. And so, if that's our job. We got to do it to the best of our ability. So that's 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 like that's what you get to walk away with every day is that your ability to do that, and and you know when you're not you're not quite there. You know when you're not putting in enough effort, um, and so there's a lot of honesty that you have to have with yourself. But you have to recognize you don't get to know when that opportunity arises. All you have all you do need to know is you have to be ready, and and that's where the hard work and the patience comes in. Hurry up and wait. That's the thing that they say about TV and film. It is so true. Not really in musical theater land, which I did for 14 years, but hurry up and wait is very, very true. So hurry up, train, do your work, work hard, go with your friends, forget about work, party, have your cocktail at 3 o'clock if you need to. But then if you have an audition the next day, no cocktail for you. You're memorizing sides. You're, going, you're doing your character development. You're highlighting reader scripts, and you're getting your wardrobe together. You're getting your makeup together. You're getting your camera ready. You're checking for lighting. What time of day should I shoot this because of how much lighting I get in my room? Great. I'm going to shoot at this time, you know, who's going to read for me? You're texting your friends who's going to read for you. Like, it's a production. <laughs> who, 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 who puts themselves on tape? Yeah. And then when you do that, like, for two pages, how long does it take? Two hours? Three hours? Because you're doing everything. You're doing your makeup. You're doing your hair. You're, it's, it's hard work. Like, but when you go to set, like, we, we just show up in, like, Sarah Lyons and, like, second team, cool. I'm going to go get a coffee at Crafty. And you come back, oh, there are marks. I stand there and I say this. I look at this camera and then I, I'm done. Oh, do, do it again for another three hours. And then I get to go home. So there's, there's just a lot of work involved. And, and but the, going through those motions, constantly showing up for yourself and to, to your art form is... Sometimes it feels like it, it's not worth anything. It doesn't matter, but it adds up. And then when you get that shot, when you have your opportunity, when you get that, that part comes in, because that's how I felt like with Josh. When I got the role of Josh, I looked at the breakdown and went, that is me. I've never seen that before. <laughs> huh. And now it's like, Okay, so here, how, how could I ruin this <laughs> by not being myself? So I kept reading it with different people just to be myself. I kept telling myself, relax, you're Josh, you're Josh, don't act, just, you've worked really hard. You've heard so many no's in musical theater. You've heard so many no's and got no callbacks for anything on TV and film for the half, the, for like the year you submitted stuff. You've done only under fives. You've never played a character this big. So just be confident. You did the work. Now trust it. And I did. And then I booked it. And it was just like, holy crap, how'd that happen? What happened? <laughs> and then, and so, so, so yeah, when those, when those things meet, it's great. But it didn't happen out of nowhere. It came from like 
hard work and showing up for so many things, whether I was getting paid for them or not, whether it was my best work or not, whether there's two people watching me, a hundred people watching me, 2,000 people watching me, whether it's an audition for a job I'm not gonna get where for a Broadway show or it's a regional job and I have to sing 16 bars and I know I'm not gonna book this show, so why am I showing up? Why do we show up? Because we love it. You love it. You love acting. <laughs> you love it so much. You love the applause. You love watching your playback and saying, nailed that moment. Or like, wow, I, I nailed that alliteration. Or like, oh, I lifted it right there. And then, like, that's where the laugh line would be. Like, you love doing this. So when you're acting, singing, creating, designing, you just do it because you love it. And you're passionate about it. And put that hard work behind it. And that no, like, at any given point in time, that is enough, and that is your best. Always do your best, and you can't go wrong. Very, very powerful. Thank you. Wow. Woo. Okay, let me get myself together. <laughs> let me right here. Okay, so um, before I segue into the, the, the next question, I'm really just going to take this moment right now to acknowledge that you folks at this panel have made history, are making history in terms of increasing visibility and representation for Filipinos um, in the entertainment industry. So let's give it up for that. Um, and so with that said, what has been the feedback from Filipino viewers um, on your prominence playing Filipino-American characters on weekly primetime broadcast television? I actually, when I started playing MacGyver, a dad who's also white is married to a Filipino and he sent me a nice message from his daughter. He said his daughter watches the show because there's somebody who looks like her. And that's like, oh, <laughs> tears, tears, tears. And I've just gotten a lot of Facebook messages and tweets from Filipinos all over the world who has a kid who looks like me or is a Filipino themselves just saying that. I've, I've never seen a Filipino like you before. I just know how powerful that is just because when I was in the Philippines, I grew up in the Philippines, even the celebrities and actors in the Philippines didn't look like me. They mm -hmm. were Eurasian, they were half. Mestiza. Yeah, they were Mestiza, nothing wrong with that, but just like, I, I, I got into a bunch of plays in high school and I thought that was amazing, but I never once entertained the idea of being an actor, just because I felt like I wasn't pretty enough, I wasn't beautiful enough, I wasn't Trinita or, or Mestiza enough. So just for somebody, a parent or a child to say that to me, it's like, it's, it's one of the things that gets me going every day. That's why I can go through a hundred auditions and say a hundred, get a hundred no's, but if I get one message like that just because of one episode in a show that I've been in, then it's like worth all the pain and, and heartbreak that I've gone through, so. Um. It's tough to follow up. But, uh, <laughs> you can do it. Um, for me, yeah, I get yeah, messages from whether it be Twitter or Instagram um, saying that super proud, like, thank you for representing us. Um, I think the special thing about my character is that I even, I, I, I'm even able to get feedback from just a general audience that appreciate the fact that um, I'm just a regular dude, but I am Filipino, and they're like, that's so cool to see, that your culture doesn't have to dictate your role, you don't have to speak Tagalog um, in your lines, like, you can just be a, a regular dude and be Filipino, and that's cool to see, because there's a lot of people like that, you know, who don't speak Tagalog, who didn't, you know, grow up in the Philippines, and it's, yeah, it's, um, I think that's one of the main things I've gotten is that um, it's cool to, to have, uh, I guess you would say, uh, yeah, Filipino-American um, on American television, finally, if anything. Um, there's something that Ina said that I hear a lot, and it's cool that you mention it too, as another uh, female Filipino actor. When you're not blank enough. Hmm. So I, there's so, but, it, but it's because then I'd show up at auditions where uh, Asian female age range show up, Japanese, and then it's Chinese. Like, right. Yeah, it, it, so if, it, if it's Asian, then it's like, oh, you, I wasn't Asian enough. I'm like, but I'm fully Asian, so how am I not Asian enough? But but, or you'll, or I'll show up, um, right? Because 
they'll say like Chinese, but then they'll stick me in there and all that. Then you're not Chinese enough. Well, yeah, it's because I'm Filipino. So, so I have all these weird thoughts, but then, you know, you just show up to the audition. So it becomes like, I, I'm not really sure what they're looking for. And then I think to myself, I guess it's not my job to really know. They're going to know when they see it. I just, it's my job to show up and, and, and do the work. Um, so we can't get hung up on, right, exactly like we weren't, However, we weren't blank enough. Whatever you're told, you're not blank enough. It's just like, well, that's their perception. And if you are or you aren't, who cares? Like, just you are who you are and you are who you, you look the way you look. So you can't really, um, you know, other than improve it or, or to your specifications, you can do that. But um, as there was something I was going to say about uh, Phil, uh, with being on TV as a, as a Filipino-American woman, I, I, I got I get more tweets now from people who are in nursing school and things like that or they're like <laughs> yeah so I have like a lot of nurses out there who are like um, you know you're you know you're inspiring me to really stick with it or like they're having a hard time nurse I was like that's really cool um, and then I was I was thinking though they were saying like they, they want to see more from my character I love my my part I'm a supporting but I'm a supporting character I'm recurring. I love my job, I love what I do and, and the cast and crew, but it also, it makes me think that people are like, well, why why don't we know more about Nurse Risa and her right. storyline and things like that? And I mean, I'm like, yeah, from your lips to the producer's ears, but <laughs> 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 but, but for the most part, it's, um, it, it does make you think just like where, uh, at what point do, is it important for, fil for, for, for the ethnic types in a show to have a, a larger story arc? And in, in your show, you know, you you do have that, so it's it's great. But when you watch other shows, or when I when I meet when I was meeting with agents, um, they would say stuff like, "Oh, you could really go out for the um, I see you in pilot season. You're going to be going out for the second or third lead, or the the third the lead best the, friend, the in the series regular. Yeah. yeah, series regular. You're the and I'm like, well, what's the first? They're like, oh, the first two, the first one or two are always going to be white people, and then the best friends, the coworkers, yeah. etc., are going to be the ethnic types." Always, Never. and it's like it's like, but you know they're not wrong when they told me this. It's like that's true. That's always how it is, um, when you watch TV. So it's like the coworker, the colleague, the best friend. Um, so, so at what point will we see that just the series regular it can just be, you know, any ethnicity whoever fits it, as opposed to series regulars or the first top two or, or the lead white people, and then let's have their best friends fill in the fill in the ethnic gap. So that's what I'm waiting for to just just to you know to see when that'll happen. Yeah, I, mean, I think Manny Manny said it where um, you get to play um, an American role, um, but it's normalized so that it's, it's it, just it, a role. You're just yeah, you're <laughs> Filipino, but it's that's not uh, yeah. kitschy. It's just like oh yeah, this is an all-American guy, and played by a Filipino actor. You don't have an accent. And you don't have an accent. <laughs> You you grew up in West Covina, California. <laughs> but like, you know, I went there for my first time yesterday. I was telling you, like, I went to go. But that's the point: is that like it's so it, you know it's it's we're, we're but we're getting to that point where it's it's being it's we're, it's uh, I hate to use that word, but it's it's normalizing. We're 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 not just like oh, so we need like an Asian guy to have an accent and sell, I don't know, shoes, I don't know, whatever. No, we need like, no, we want leading men, and so, and we want a non-white leading leading man, so let's see, everyone under the sun. And and I'm seeing more of that now, but it's, I wish there was more of it. Um, so, I don't know, it kind of makes me want to work harder. I don't know about you guys. I just like, all right, I want to be that one that like cracks through. So I'm just gonna keep working hard on what I'm doing, and, and you cross your fingers, and you you do your hard work, and you try to represent and do your best. Um, and and like, Catherine Byrne said this, our choreographer. She someone said, what advice would you would you give to like young artists who are who are like in the infancy of their careers? Um, and she says, create the work that you want to do or be be the be the artist like like if there's a void in 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 your field like a, a role that you haven't seen done or a story that hasn't been told be the solution to that do that um which is why you're seeing which is why i think crazy ex-girlfriend 
came, came up was because I think Aline and Rachel realized there wasn't a show like this. Uh, and I mean, it sounds so basic, right? Like, well, no one's done this, and this is something I do well, so well, then go do that. <laughs> it's like the doctor thing, it hurts when I do this. Well, don't do that. <laughs> but you, like, I want to audition for this role or this kind of show, but I don't see it anywhere. Well, then create it, you know? Um, uh, so that was slightly off topic from what, what you asked. <laughs> but, but yeah, Philip, I mean, I, I get, yeah, I, I get messages every once in a while, Twitter, Instagram, people from the Filipino community, like, being very grateful or, or, or sometimes it's late because like are your guys your shows on Netflix too or Hulu and stuff like that? Hulu, yeah. Hulu, because like sometimes it's so late, <laughs> so they're like, oh my gosh, I just watched the first season. You're hilarious. Or like Filipinos, <laughs> yeah. just saw the Thanksgiving episode. I'm like, that was two years ago, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, chicken adobo and dinner guan. <laughs> On the American screen, no, um, but but yeah, so it, it's cool that, that people, even if it's late, it's still it's still people who are viewing and who are, um, you know, w waking up to this idea that Filipinos are more visible on yeah. television now, and it's it's becoming like normal yeah. and more common. You know, me like people come to me like, oh my gosh, you're Filipino, I love lumpia, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's really good, yeah. right? It's like another Asian egg roll. It's like a brother to the egg roll. Um, I'm glad you like lumpia. So, but, but uh, um, it's an it's an exciting. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's true. I was like, yeah. Good for you. Um, lumpia. Um, what you were saying, the, the time is. This is actually an exciting time. I'm looking at the audience, and I feel like everyone here is ethnic. Or even though this yeah. panel wasn't meant, the audience members I know is open to everybody. Yeah. You, we should all feel encouraged because, especially for those who are maybe I don't know where uh, where everyone's at level wise in your career. But if you're auditioning now for under fives, co-stars, one-liners, these these mm -hmm. things, that should actually excite you because um, at that level I feel like it's they're looking for people who are the non-white. So it, I, I don't want to sound like it's a bad thing. When they're not, when they're looking for non-white, because right now the co-stars, all those things, they're trying to fill in the world around the white leads with ethnic, ethnic types. So this is an exciting time for all of us and you guys and everything, or whoever's um, auditioning for the like smaller roles, which. You know, there's no such thing as small roles, only small paychecks. That's what, right. Yeah. <laughs> Have you I ever heard that? You to say that. Like, <laughs> Someone no, was saying that. that you heard that? You not heard that one? There's no such thing as a small role, only a small paycheck. It's like, <laughs> but um, so <laughs> it's just really funny. Um, and so I just I was basically referring um, earlier when I made that comment. It's more for like the the series regulars, the the leads of the shows that you that you watch. Um, just pay attention when you watch television. If you see that trend or if you see it starting to change, because that's what I pay attention to, and I watch a lot of television. Um, but it is an exciting time for, for for actors, my actor friends who are just starting to book their first few co-stars and things like that, um, who are non-Caucasian. So um, be encouraged by that, I'd say too. Yeah, right I mean, well, it's visibility, guys. It starts with one pebble, and that ripples. And it just keeps going. Just takes just takes one pebble, and then and then like 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 four of us are here. We're talking to you. We don't know what work you're gonna do after you leave this room, and this is a, a huge ripple effect is gonna happen after this meeting today, and it's all gonna be because of all of you who are here in this room and the people who are gonna watch this video when they when they see it. And we don't know if it's going to be a 10-year-old who's like, I want to be a makeup artist. Or it's going to be a 40-year-old who's going to be like, you know what? I, I've been a school teacher for 20 years, but I really need to be a writer. And I need to produce. Or, they're, or they're going to show up at our auditions. You're going to be like, damn it. Damn. Okay, more competition. Why did I inspire you? <laughs> okay, younger, hotter me, you can take it. <laughs> Son of a... That's it, I'm out. Yeah. All right. So um, thank you. I have my list of questions, and I can keep going on and on, but we're running short on time, and I want to mm -hmm. I want to honor the attendees and the community that's sitting right before you. So I'm going to open up the floor to folks with questions. I think we can take about two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so better make it good. Take about two. No, great. Okay, thank you so much. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I saw too. On your journey has created the, the most impact um, where you are now as professionals and personally. Like what um, was it was there a specific turning point um, where you feel like um, just like 
where it's just, we, like, I think we use the word drop in, and we just don't feel like this is, this is such, this is just, I'm in a great place. What, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. this, I, I don't know if that Mm -hmm. We should rephrase that question for, for audio. What was, yeah. can you rephrase it? What, so we're going to um, repeat it back to you. Just what was just like a great turning point for you on, on your journey? What was a great turning point for you on your journey where you realized like you, were, you dropped in and you had arrived at a pinnacle moment <laughs> <Right>. in your... <laughs> am, I, am I putting words yeah. in your mouth? No, <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of open-ended. So it's open-ended. Yeah, go, go for it, yeah. Because because the first thing I was going to say was um, I, I often reflect in my brain, you know, after like acting class or you get like you're in class and your teacher says, so how did it go for you? How was that? And then you have to talk to them and you basically say everything that's going on in your brain. I do that with myself like all the time and sometimes with my career. So I kind of self-assess and I realized that that happens. What you're asking happens a lot of times, I, I think, in a person's career. And um, you know, people say like, oh, oh, I've plateaued in my career. Or like, oh, I've really leveled up in my career. I think we all like have plateaus where we coast. But all of a sudden there's a spike and it gets really good. And you're like, awesome, awesome, how long can you do this? And we're gonna plateau yeah. again. Ah, oh, we're plateauing. And like, hopefully you, you plateau and you don't, you don't dip. <laughs> but, but I think within that journey, you, you, um, you level up in, in, in other ways. And it, sometimes it takes a plateau, it takes a slow time, it takes a downtime, it takes six months of being unemployed, having two auditions, and you're freaking out because you're afraid you're gonna lose your agent, that was me in New York, and just like mm -hmm. working the crap job and hating it and going to my one acting class a week wishing I could afford more and wishing I didn't have debt, wishing all these other things, waiting kind of for something else to happen, but still putting in the work where I could, keeping my spirits up, and something happens, a job or like a person or an idea, and you just start like getting inspired again. And then you use that inspiration and you run with it until something else inspires you. And you just kind of keep doing that. And then the other day I was like, how do I know if I'm, if, I, if I'm doing it right? Or if I really know what I'm doing? I'm like, dude, you've been doing this a really long time. I think you know what you're doing. So it's, I feel, feel like we all have that, uh, that, that relationship with ourselves where we're, we either aren't asking ourselves that question enough, or we're asking it too much and it's paralyzing us. Um, and I, so I think there's like a lot of moments where you can, where things turn for you. What really felt like I was doing this, I, I, as long as you're working hard and attacking it from all angles, let's not go back to that forever, but yeah, once you do all that, um, you, you, you have, you can have moments of doubt, but because you're doing everything you can, you're not really uh, doubting your, I guess, your efforts, right? But what this is at the end of 2015 only and only is when I quit my serving job from a restaurant here in, in Los Angeles. And that was after half a year of having been on Code Black. So I was serving tables when literally in the pub, I, I, my episode was running. And I was still serving prime rib, which is really hard, I'm vegan. But anyway, um, <laughs> hard to do. So you know, like that's, that's work ethic. That's, you know, yeah. you gotta do yeah. what you gotta do. Yeah. And everything, um, but but when I was able to um, quit my day job, and they were so they're always so kind to me, and I was always able to leave for auditions or switch shifts and everything like that. But when you when I when I was able to feel like because I was trying to be practical, and I didn't even though I was getting you know I had recurring and I was on the episodes, I didn't want to I didn't feel safe enough to leave my serving job. And to, when I was able to quit that at the end of 2015, to me that signaled a, a, a turning point where I said. Now I'm really doing this and only this and only this and I've been doing this and only this since and that's really felt good for good for me and when I get you know a paycheck I, I cry. Wait, that doesn't sound good. I cry because of happiness, of joy, of joy, of joy, of joy, of joy. One cent residual. What? Um, <laughs> they will send that to you. They do. They will so, send that to you. But but I, I mean I cry in that little um, way because I know that I worked so hard to just even get this far, but I'm still a long ways off from even where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more. It's more struggle, but it's it's worth it when you feel like you're doing what you're what you want to do, and you can do only that and nothing else. So that's a big that was a big turning point for me, and that only happened to you know end of 2015. So. Yeah, I feel like in an, an actor's career, any artist's career, you're always going to have the ups and downs and and these waves. Um, so 
there are going to be those great moments and keep in mind there are going to be some down moments where you're going to be like oh crap why am i doing this um but i feel like especially in this industry because there's so much rejection and so much so many no's you really got to celebrate the wins um even just the smallest wins whether it be a callback, if it's your first callback, celebrate that. If, um, if it's your first one-liner, celebrate that. Mm -hmm. Because it's, there's, yeah, there's so much coming at you and everything is just beating you down. It's very important to, to celebrate those small wins that you get. And, um, and I think that's what kind of carried me through with my career, just as long as I took a moment and mm -hmm. celebrated these small wins that continue to build um, to these larger wins. Um, and mm -hmm. eventually it'll plateau, eventually it'll go down, but um, just make sure you focus on the positive. And I think that's what kind of helped me throughout my career, if anything. Well, um, two years ago I had a meeting with a potential manager. He rejected me at the end of the meeting, but when he looked at my resume and it was listed that I was Filipino, he said, oh, well, all you're gonna get are just one-liner coasters. That was you who wrote that article? Or yeah. I wrote that, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I was like, oh, that's you. Oh, oh, no, that, that was me, and I, remember. I, I, I nursed that heartbreak for like six months. I didn't tell anybody, because I'm like, then what, is, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm not enough? I'm not good-looking enough, I'm not white enough, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, like you're saying, yeah. insert not enough statement here, right? So. Shortly after that, I booked MacGyver. I'm a recurring on baller. So I, I feel like, hey, I, I'm enough. You guys are enough. Your age, your ethnicity, your look, your height. I'm short. I'm 5'1". I'm enough. You guys are enough. So I feel like I've, I've come to a place where I feel like I'm still working on it every day. But I feel like my biggest win for me is just me accepting who I am and just putting my best foot forward, my best work forward. And that's that's just what's buoying me throughout this process, mm -hmm. so. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. I saw your hand up. Go ahead. Um, so, looking at the Filipino community, it seems like we, it looks like we're not very cohesive. And you look at, um, you know, the African-American community, it seems, it seems incredibly cohesive. You have know, panels, you have uh, you know, movies that they're all doing together and working together. Um, it seems like Asians in America were not Powerful question. Yeah. How? What can we do as an Asian community to to be more cohesive in the entertainment field and be more visible as 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 an Asian a whole, collective, right? a whole? Join Phil Creative. Say again. Yeah. 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 Hashtag Phil Creative. Yeah. How? What can we do? I think is the question. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think organize. Definitely, organizations like this, Phil, I'm Creative, CAPE. Um, mm -hmm. I went to a meeting um, with uh, Chloe Bennett. She, she's on Marvels of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. and Brad Jenkins, who uh, has been working with Obama um, for the past few years. Um, and they've created this organization called RUN. And they basically put it, in a perspective, uh, put it in the perspective that the industry needs to be able to combine with uh, the political arena. And I think being able to combine those two together um, and supporting each other, because that's what the African American community has. They have these organizations like- Like um, grassroots. Like grassroots, like the NAACP. Um, they're able to create these events and these organizations because they have, they've combined their powers in a sense. So mm. it's, a, it's, it's very much just, creating the support system. And I remember going to this meeting, and it was, it was really eye-opening because um, it was um, a fellow Filipino, Dante Bosco, who said this. And he was talking about how he has these uh, African-American friends. And they were just passing by the theater. And his buddies were like, oh, yeah, we got to go buy tickets because it's uh, opening weekend. 
and then mm -hmm. but then they're not they're not even gonna watch the the movie. They're just gonna buy the tickets. But they're yeah. so supportive mm -hmm. uh, cool. uh, in their community that they'll just buy the tickets just so that you know because it'll help the the, the online sales or the the sales. Um, just having things like that, um, and it's easier said than done. And I think organizations like this are yes. providing that avenue, and other Asian organizations uh, are giving us that that wave to start that. But I think that's one of the answers um, that I can put out there. Really having a strong support system, whether it be in the industry and in the political avenue, um, that's a big thing. And um, adding to that, on a personal level, um, we just, my husband and I, and a partner of ours just finished a feature film screenplay, um, and we shot the teaser for that, and we're hoping to shop that around at network studios and just get that off the ground to inject ourselves into a mainstream level to normalize it and say, oh, that's a Filipino story. Those are Filipino actors. Let's let's bring them in. Let's let's write more stories for them. You know, whether they're every girl, every boy, or specifically Filipino stories. I think it's important to get your work out there, not just as actors, but as filmmakers. And I think Craig, who's here, he's very hi. <laughs> he's 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 very gung ho and very like supportive when it comes to not just actors, it's filmmakers. He always says, "Hey, how can I help?" Does anybody have a script that they need help polishing with? Can anybody volunteer because so-and-so has a project that they need help with? So just you know, get your work out there, I, th I think is the bottom line. I think, I think it's hard to answer that question. I'm just trying to think. It's because I guess like with, um, I don't know if there's, su is there such thing as like what one would call the Asian experience or is it broken down into the different countries because there's a Filipino experience there's so mm -hmm. it's it's not quite the same as with other um, cultures or ethnicities like where there's, there's a yeah there's a you know the yeah. black experiences so I, I, I mean I'm, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer I'm just thinking is that why we're there is not such a, a unified right. you know friend um, and if if not like certainly organizations like um, um, collaborative organizations like Philam Creative that is one way we are um, collecting as a whole because then you want to collaborate with um, people, for instance, who are all Filipino. It's not to exclude other people. That's why this panel is open. It said it said it's not just for um, oh non non Filipinos are well, welcome. What, what is it? A welcome, of course. All these things, but it is important to to gather and collaborate. So if when afterwards you guys should all be meeting each other and and passing out business cards and talking because someone you might be sitting next to a writer and you're an actor and it's it's the network that you're creating and, and that's a good lesson for every day in life I, you know i'll go to lunch and i'll probably end up talking to the person the people at the table next to me and then you never know what will come from that so the people around you are right now are who you should be talking to um and of course they'll have friends and cousins and and whatnot and you guys will get together and maybe you'll create a project maybe it'll be a web series or maybe they'll know a casting director who's like oh someone Someone I know is looking for someone just like you. Um, you. You just never know. So I, that's where we can start. I don't know how how to make it. And then and then we've got a lovely lady who's an interviewer from ABS CBN. So maybe ABS CBN no. could yeah. could uh, <laughs> could maybe create a a show like no, I don't know have a show on their network and and or um, something that's based here in the states um, I mean, or something because it's such a popular channel. I know. I have. Um, I mean, this this isn't directly answer your question, but I think it. I think it is a. I think is it is a bottom line, to the answer of your question, which is, um, similar to what I said before. We're like, you know, like, if you don't feed your plants, they die. Like you don't water them, they die, right? So, um, how many Filipino act actors are out there? How many Filipino writers are out there? And how many of those people are executive producers? How many of them want to produce film? How many of them? How many of them value film? How many of them value television? How many of them are trying to tell stories? How many of them give a crap about it? That's the big question. So you want to see a change? You want to see more Filipinos out there creating TV amazing shows. work, creating TV shows? Then you have. Then we have to play our part. So, because because we just said how when we grew up we didn't see that, and now we are basically saying like we're doing our part to gain visibility so that we can normalize the situation and not be like the, the best friend. Now we're just Americans and we're just telling stories that belong to us because we're in America. Um, 
we need more producers. We need more executive. Pro we need more writers. We and they have to come up through the ranks, and they have to make themselves known, and their work has to be good, and they have to be competitive with the market that we're currently living in. So I'm not. I'm just being real. Like there's a market out there, and I knew what that market. We knew what we. You just heard our stories of what we went through to be sitting here in front of you. We need more people who are willing to do that, who are willing to fail at the risk of success. <laughs> and that's what we're that's what we're working towards. And it, it's a long journey, but I think I think we all just have little, just do your part, your little part, and keep trying to be your best person and connect with people and create great work and strive to be your best and collaborate with people. It doesn't just have to be the Filipino experience. It, we work with everyone, and then when you get up there, you can start collaborating more and create bigger works. We're just trying to create that synergy, that energy. That gets us up even higher and higher and higher. So um, that to say, like, I don't. I think wherever we are at in our careers, we're not done yet. It sounds like we're not done. And so I hope I, I look to you guys, and I, I hope for your for, for for our future's sake that none of you are done either. Yeah. Wow. Two perfect questions to close Great out questions. the panel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Before we do that, I want to bring up here a very, very important person. She is our executive di uh, director, the leader of the pact. We love her. Please help me welcome Meriden Phillips. Yeah. Oh, there's a fishbowl. Oh, or a fishbowl. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk 
Fishbowl. Anonymous. Anonymous. And then here's Uh I just want to congratulate everyone for showing up this early uh, morning, or this morning. Uh, and, uh, and everyone here in this panel, too, that has uh, volunteered their time and their expertise to all of you here. And that's so much it. I mean, I words. And my heart shows much more. So. Thank you, Edwin. Wow. Thank you, Edwin and Mary Dan. I really appreciate being here. Thank you. All of you. So Filipino. Yes. <laughs> so Filipino. So we're going to move these tables. We're going to ask for you guys to stand up. Okay. You're going to ask um, everyone to stand up. Your here. And also, what is the official, um, on the hashtag, if we, if they had a question, should we just tag Philam Creative on Twitter? Or? Uh, you can do Philam Creative, or you can do Stack After Stack. Okay. And there were many hands, so I know we didn't get to answer all the questions, so you can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I mean, um, just you know, tag my name if you have a question, and I, I try to be really interactive with everybody. Share, you want to share your um, social media as well, let me know how to follow yeah. you yeah. as well. Yeah, and me, and me, Mark, you guys, I, 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 on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm Alex Adian, I'm I'm basically at Adian Jacinto with a zero. Yeah, yeah.